Back in 2017, I was out with my brother-in-law. We had just had dinner and I felt super sweaty all of a sudden and nauseous and basically couldn't breathe. He got me to the nearest hospital. And when we got to the hospital, they did some x-rays and they said, you have internal bleeding coming from your liver. And so they said, we're sending you to Rush. That was the first experience I'd ever had with Rush. She was admitted to the hospital with abdominal pain and was found to just have rather torrential bleeding in her belly. Um, it was thought to come from a mass on her liver. We brought Ms. Carter down for what we call an embolization. The goal of that is to find where the bleed is happening and shut it down. I had such a great experience at Rush during my stay that I was wheeled out of there thinking, I might want to work here one day. A position opened up for a producer. It was like the perfect position for me. A year and a half later, I ended up working at the place that saved my life. Next couple years, she was monitored, was always told, yeah, that you still have that hemangioma there, it's not bleeding anymore, nothing you need to do about it, but we'll just keep an eye on it. And then in 2019, she was referred to me. We were able to take a little bit closer look at some of the imaging follow-up tests that she had had. Fortunately, we were able to confirm that this was, in fact, the rare focal nodular hyperplasia that bleeds. It's about the size of a golf ball, and it is on the underside of my liver, right by my diaphragm. The end of the days was when I'd really feel it, and it'd be a little more severe, and so I'd just have to lie down and kind of take it easy for the rest of the night to recover. Over time, you know, happening so often throughout my day, it, it really became an issue that they said, okay, we're gonna need to do something about this. If we, are, if we don't wanna remove it, we're gonna need to find a way to manage your pain. We again talked with our surgical team, Dr. Hurdle and uh, Dr. Denardin, who's from hepatology, and said, well, let's go after angiogram and see if we can shrink this down further. In June of 2019, I got an embolization of my benign tumor, and for six months afterwards, everything was great. I felt no pain in that area. But then back in February of 2020, it started to come back again. And focal nodular hyperplasia um, is one of those lesions that even if you cut off the blood supply to it and it shrinks and the pain goes away, it has that ability to eventually grow new blood vessels. When my doctors came to me and said, we think you should get another embolization and it's during COVID-19 and elective procedures had been paused, I was scared. But I also knew, you know, how good it was when I didn't have the pain. It was really hard to say, I'm gonna wait because COVID-19 is not gonna be over anytime soon. I felt like I had an inside look at all the things that the doctors and leadership and the employees were all doing to try and keep us safe. And so that reassured me. And that made me say, if I'm going to trust anyone, I'm going to put my trust in Rush. I got my mask, then I did a temperature check-in to make sure my temperature was normal. Walking down the hallway to the information desk, everyone's wearing masks. There are more signs on the floors that show you where to be walking and how much space and then a waiting area where all the chairs were six feet apart at least. So after I checked in, they brought me back to get a COVID test. They had um, someone stick a swab up my nose, 10 seconds each side, and now they're running that test and then they'll come back and get me to take me up to my room soon, as long as that's negative. And while I wait for my COVID test, I have an entire room to myself. The staff itself, we're all uh, wearing protective equipment when appropriate. We have a system in place provided by the hospital guidelines, which also follows the national guidelines from the, the CDC. And we're trying to limit who's where and how many people are in the room when needed. We brought Ms. Carter to our procedural area. And then after a lot of time and effort in finding small branches, we found that there is still some blood flow to that, that we were eventually able to get a tiny catheter all the way to the area of that mass and shut it down. Within a couple of days, I was feeling much better and I have a scar that I can't even see. It's been a little over two weeks since my procedure and I'm feeling great. I don't have the same amount of pain when I sneeze or cough. One of the things I love about working at Rush is the ability to work in a multidisciplinary team, uh, is to able, able to have colleagues um, that are not just brilliant physicians, but also, um, you know, caring, caring people. Um, and that we will kind of go to the ends of the earth to make sure that we have the right diagnosis and that we're being mindful of a patient 
patient's needs, um, both in terms of choosing a, a less invasive strategy when appropriate or being very invasive when appropriate. And with Ms. Carter, I think that we were fortunate that we got all ends of the spectrum. I'm looking forward to watching a comedy without pain. <laughs> I'm looking forward to dancing and not feeling pain at an hour afterwards. When I get married, trying to have a child because of, of the pain that it gave me um, and where it's located, it was gonna be really difficult for me to carry a child to term with the way things were. It's normal to be a little anxious, but everyone here at Rush is doing everything they can to uh, to make sure that, that when you come here, that you're healthy and that you leave healthy.